Hi, my name is Agnes, and today I'm interviewing Jay, who went on an international co-op experience in uh, Turkey. So first, please tell us about yourself and where you went. Sure. Um, I'm Jay Dencilio. I'm in 3A Political Science and Business, and I have a special interest in international relations. And over my first co-op term, I went over to Ankara, Turkey, which is the capital. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was your position there? My position there was officially called English Facilitation Assistant. Mm -hmm. So the position called for extracting the most English from the university students over there. And one of the responsibilities, well actually we had a lot of creative control. So we got to form a lot of lesson plans and run our own club for extracurriculars after the school time was officially ended. Mm -hmm. So why did you choose Turkey in particular? I think I chose Turkey just because um, it's one of those places that you don't just go to and I haven't had mm -hmm. any chance to go over to that region. Right. And I thought it would be a really cool adventure as well for our first co-op placement. So if, oh, it was your first co-op yeah. placement. That's quite, quite rare, isn't it? Uh, were you kind of scared before going? Were you very nervous? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Very nervous. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I just thought that it would be a good way to break out of routine and the fact that Waterloo was offering it, right. I just thought it would be a great experience to have. Mm -hmm. So you found the job normally on JobMine, right? Yep, through the JobMine process mm -hmm. and the continuous round. All right, so you said you found the job on JobMine, yeah. but could you tell me a little bit about the interview process, what it was like? Yeah, the interview process was um, your typical one. You would go over to the Tatham Center and do a Skype mm -hmm. interview. And that had a few challenges because the connection was overseas, so the feed wasn't always clear. Mm -hmm. And in, during the interview, it was a little bit, the signal was a bit weak, mm -hmm. so there were off and on times. But yeah, for the most part, yeah. But then after you get the job and you rank and you get the offer, um, one of the international offices over at Tatham Center was really helpful in coordinating the visas, especially mm -hmm. in communicating with the embassy over at Toronto and just to get all your passwords clear. So mm -hmm. it was pretty convenient in that sense. So they provide a lot of support for you? Oh, for sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. They collaborated with the Turkish embassy and as well as Travel Cuts over at the UW Plaza. Mm -hmm. So it, they built the framework and all we pretty much had to do was follow the directions accordingly. What about the airline ticket there and back? Do they pay for your transportation? Uh, no, you cover your own flight ticket there. Right. How about the compensation? Um, how much were you able to make as compared to a Canadian workplace and how much were you able to save? Okay, yeah, compensation, in terms of saving for tuition for university, mm -hmm. it definitely didn't cover that. But what it did cover was the cost of living in the country. The position actually provided the dorms for free and they provided lunches for free. Mm -hmm. And the stipend was $350 Canadian, converted into the Turkish currency, which is lira. It was good discretionary income for sure. And the cost of living there is about half of what we pay in Canada. So a uh, full meal with a Coke appetizer and main course over in Canada would be around eight dollars. If you convert what the Turkish prices were, it could be anywhere from two to four dollars, which right. is really cheap. Right. So you That's can go good out a fair bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, in terms of compensation, it wasn't that big a deal because the experience is actually really worth it. Mm -hmm. It's considering dorms are covered and the dorms are really nice. The quality of living over there that was provided for us was actually excellent. Mm -hmm. So could you please describe how a like typical day was for you uh, at your co-op placement? Sure. Um, a typical day in co-op uh, over at Ankara was you would go to school and then you would have your prep time in the office mm -hmm. and then after that you would go over and teach about two classes. So you would do anything from discussions to doing a game in class and then mm -hmm. after that you would go to your office, report back to the supervisor, tell them how class went. Mm -hmm. And then you would go over to the recording studio in exam times, and then you would record exam material such as um, just a scenario where you do dialogue and the students have to pick out what you're saying and then answer questions accordingly. All right. so what was the best part about the job? Oh, there was a lot. Uh, just being in Turkey was great, mm -hmm. the food was excellent, uh, the cafeteria in the school was great, but I think the most the thing I enjoyed the most was definitely the students, mm -hmm. just because the culture over there is very warm and students were very accepting and they just genuinely were curious about what 
you were doing over there and what your position was. And they asked a lot of questions about Canada. So acting as kind of an ambassador and telling them, telling them a bit about the country was really fun. Really fun for you. Um, so the students there, did they all speak <coughs> English pretty well or were there a lot of like language barriers and stuff like that? Um, no, de definitely a lot of language barriers mm -hmm. and definitely a big sense of culture shock mm -hmm. over there. And you have to kind of meet them halfway just yeah. because um, it's easier to communicate and teach them that way. Mm -hmm. So I learned a bit of Turkish there as well just to get them to learn about concepts for sure. So what was the city like? Uh, Ankara was a pretty quiet place, actually. It was a capital, and there was a mm -hmm. lot of... Um, there's this thing called an ezan, where they, they mm -hmm. had time designated for prayer, essentially. Mm -hmm. And there would be that, and then everything would kind of quiet down. And mm. yeah. Did you travel a lot uh, after work, I guess? Uh, yeah, I traveled during the weekends a bit within mm -hmm. the country and the city, so I got a chance to go over to Istanbul and mm -hmm. Izmir and right. Antalya. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was definitely a good thing, and we had Fridays off. Fridays off mm -hmm. for travel? Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, as long as you were back by Monday. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the biggest challenge of the entire experience? I think the biggest challenge of the experience was definitely culture shock, mm -hmm. especially for the first month, because we, we take for granted the kind of um, convenience there is with just being able to communicate, but over there when you mm -hmm. can't use English to just get the basic orders down for like a restaurant mm -hmm. or if you just wanted to purchase something in the store, you couldn't just do it without kind of a big hassle. And they were genuinely curious too, so you'd go to a restaurant or you'd go to a store mm -hmm. and then it wasn't just a normal transaction occurring. They would ask you about Canada, so there was a bit of a fuss. <laughs> and for the first couple of days, it was really cool, but then after a while, you just wanted to go and purchase mm -hmm. something without all that happening. But other than that, I think that the best way to deal with culture shock is just to immerse yourself in the culture, get to know a bit of the language, get to know what your favorite foods are, easy things like that, and mm -hmm. you get over it. Well. You get over it pretty quickly. Um, you mentioned culture shock as one of the challenges, but what about reverse cultural shock? Because some people have that when they come back, like uh, since they were there for so long, they come back and they weren't really mm -hmm. used to everything. How was that for you? Yeah, definitely experienced a huge load of reverse culture shock coming back to Canada. Oh. <clears throat> I think the two biggest things we had to deal with mm -hmm. was um, body language just mm -hmm. because everyone in Turkey was so, um, it's a more space and proximity is completely mm -hmm. different and touch was a very normal part. So not having that around in Canada, um, I know I was a lot more touchy-feely when mm -hmm. I came back and all my friends noticed. Um, another thing was reading, because you work so hard to immerse mm -hmm. yourself in the language in Turkey, reading included, that even looking at the same letters mm -hmm. is you're pronouncing them differently. So I know C over here is pronounced as K, so cat. Mm -hmm. Over here, that's the English, but in Turkish, you would look at C-A-T and you would pronounce it jat because you'd make a J sound. Huh. So even just reading and then reading signs over at Canada was a completely different experience. Symbols too, because Canada has different, com completely different symbols. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess you just get so used to a place and then yeah. when you come back, even though you were here, like you came from here, it, it was strange, wasn't yeah. it? Because you do so much work immersing yourself in the culture over there that when you get back, you're not used to the culture that you actually <laughs> came from. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But it, it took around a month, I would say. Even dietary needs, for sure, was mm -hmm. was a huge thing because over there, it was more mm -hmm. yogurt-based foods and dairy. Right. Whereas in Canada, that's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. um, so... Other than that, would you have any other, you know, advice for students who are looking to go on international co-op? I think the biggest advice I would have for international students is just to take the punch. Mm -hmm. Just if you if you see an opportunity and you genuinely have an interest, um, talk it out with your parents for mm -hmm. sure to make sure you're all on the same page. But I would not highly recommend it just because the experience is not something that's usual and mm -hmm. the fact that Waterloo has things like this definitely mm -hmm. should be taken advantage of. Right, because not every university does these days, yeah. right? Um, so thank you so much for coming in today. No worries. Yeah. And uh, that's it. Cool. Bye. Yeah.